On Dreams From the Book, The Arena By Saint Ignatius Brian Chaninath Demons use dreams to disturb and injure the souls of men, similarly, by paying attention to dreams, inexperienced monastics do themselves great harm, for this reason, it is necessary to define here the meaning of dreams in a person whose nature has not yet been renewed by the Holy Spirit. God arranges the state of sleep in such a way that we can be at complete rest. This rest is so complete that for the entire duration of it a person loses consciousness of his existence, comes to self-forgetfulness. During sleep, any activity that requires conscious involvement and willing action ceases completely, only that activity which is necessary for existence remains. In the body, the blood continues to move, the stomach continues to digest food, the lungs continue to breathe, the skin passes perspiration, thoughts, dreams and feelings continue to multiply in the soul, but instead of being arbitrary and willing, they remain fully unconscious. From such reveries, accompanied by thoughts and sensations, a dream is formed. It is often strange, as it does not belong to any system of arbitrary and deliberate reflections of man, but is spontaneous according to the laws of our fallen nature. Sometimes the dream bears an incoherent imprint of arbitrary reflections and memories, and sometimes it is the result of some moral sentiment. Thus, the dream itself cannot and should not have any meaning. It is ridiculous and quite illogical then, that some people want to see in their dreams predictions of their own future or the future of others, or some other meaning. What is the meaning behind that which has no reason to exist? The demons, having access to our souls during our waking hours, have it also during sleep. And while we sleep, they tempt us with sin, mixing their dreams with ours. Seeing that we pay attention to their dreams, they try to make them as entertaining as possible and arouse even more interest in these delusions, and slowly entice us into trusting them. Such trust is always associated with conceit, and conceit makes our view of ourselves false, which makes all of our actions devoid of correctness, this is what the demons need. To those who have succeeded in conceit and pride demons begin to appear as angels of light, in the form of martyrs and venerable saints, even in the form of the Mother of God and Christ Himself, indulging their vanity with promises of crowns of heaven, ascending them to the zenith of pride and vanity. From this zenith they will surely fall into a pit of destruction. We need to always keep in mind that in our state, not yet renewed by grace, we are not able to see no other dreams than those made up by the delirium of the soul and the slander of demons. Just as during the state of wakefulness thoughts and dreams constantly arise in us from the fallen nature or are brought by demons, so during sleep we only see dreams through the action of our fallen nature, and the action of demons. Our sole consolation during wakefulness must always be tenderness, born from the remembrance of death and the judgment of God, only these thoughts arise in us from the living grace of God, planted by holy baptism, brought to us by holy angels, according to our state of penance, so in dreams, though very rarely, in extreme need, the angels of God present to us either our demise, or the torment of hell, or the terrible day of judgment. From such dreams we come to the fear of God, to tenderness, to weeping for ourselves. But such dreams are given very rarely to the ascetic, or even to the obvious sinner, only by a special, unknown vision of God, they are given very rarely not because of the stinginess of divine grace, no, for the reason that everything that happens to us outside of the general order leads us into conceit and shakes in us the humility that is so necessary for our salvation. The will of God, the action of which is so necessary for the salvation of man, depicted in the scriptures so clearly, so strongly, so completely, that its use for the purposes of salvation in violation of the general order of the world is most redundant and unnecessary. To the one who was resurrected from the dead it was said, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rise from the dead, Luke 16 27-31. 
Experience has shown that many who were granted visions of the last judgment and other afterlife horrors in their dreams were shaken by the vision for a short time, but then forgot what they had seen, and led a careless life, on the contrary, those who had no visions, but had thoroughly studied the law of God, gradually came to fear God, achieved spiritual prosperity and then joyfully passed from the earthly plane of sorrows into blissful eternity. St. John Climacus reflects on the participation of demons in monastic dreams as follows, when we leave our home and household for the sake of the Lord and give ourselves up to wandering for the love of God, then demons, in revenge for this, try to disturb us with various dreams of our relatives either weeping, or dying, or being held in prison and exposed to adversity for us. He who believes his dreams is like one who chases his shadow and tries to catch it. The demons of vanity appear as prophets in our dreams, foreseeing the future by their cunning and foretelling it to us, so that we may be perplexed by the fulfillment of these visions, and, like those who have already gained foreknowledge, fall into deep vanity and pride. To those who believe the demon, he is often a prophet, and to those who despise him, he is always a liar. Being a spirit, he is omnipresent and sees all that is happening, and when he realizes that someone is about to die, he announces it in a dream to the frivolous. Demons do not have any foreknowledge, otherwise, wizards and charlatans would be able to predict our death. Demons often transform into angels of light, often assume the image of martyrs and communicate with us in our dreams, and once we awaken, immerse us in joy from the experience. Let this be a sign of charm, devilish seduction. Holy angels show torment, judgment and death, which is why we awaken in terror and trembling after. If we begin to worship demons in our dreams, then they will begin mocking us in our waking state. The believer in dreams is completely ignorant, and the unbeliever in any dream is truly wise. Trust only those dreams that proclaim torment and judgment to you, if, on account of them, despair begins to trouble you, then such dreams are also from demons. Saint John Cassian tells about a certain monastic, a native of Mesopotamia, who spent his whole life in solitude and fasting, but perished from the seduction of demonic dreams. The demons, seeing that the ascetic paid little attention to his spiritual development, but focused all of his attention on physical feats, began to present him with dreams that, due to their devilish cunning, actually came true. When the monastic became confident in his dreams and in himself, the devil presented him a magnificent dream in which the Jews were enjoying heavenly bliss, and the Christians were languishing in the torments of hell. At the same time, the demon, of course in the form of an angel or some Old Testament prophet, gave advice to the monastic to accept Judaism in order to be able to participate in the grace of the Jews, which the monastic did without the slightest delay. What has been said is enough to explain to our beloved brothers, modern monastics, how reckless it is to listen to dreams, especially to trust them, and what terrible harm can be born from trusting them. From paying attention to dreams, confidence in them is bound to creep into the soul, and therefore attention itself is strictly forbidden and dangerous. A nature renewed by the Holy Spirit is governed by completely different laws than a nature that has fallen. The ruler of the renewed man is the Holy Spirit. The grace of the Divine Spirit shone upon them, said Macarius of Egypt, and was established in the depths of their minds, this is the Lord as is the soul. Both awake and asleep, they are in the Lord, beyond sin, beyond earthly and carnal thoughts and dreams. Their thoughts and dreams remain beyond their will in sleep, unlike in carnal people, who are at the mercy of their fallen will, they act in them under the guidance of the Spirit, and the dreams of such people have a spiritual meaning. Thus, the righteous Joseph was taught the mystery of the Incarnation the Word made flesh in his dream, he was told to flee to Egypt and return from it, Matt. 1 and 2. Dreams sent by God have an irresistible conviction in them. This conviction is clear to saints and incomprehensible to those who are still struggling with the passions.